Cross so fast, please. Do not cross out Wang name. Cross out Snake instead. Nice shot, Pop. She wish she went to the heavy sleeper. And now, if you please, one million dollars, Mr. Benson, Mom. Banzai, Pop. Very clever of you, Mr. Wang. Oh, yes. As you can see, I can see. So I see. Tell me, as the only survivor, how did you deduce it was me? Went back to theory seldom used today. <laughs> Butler did it. Hmm. Well, I hadn't thought of that. But how do you account for my dead body in the kitchen? Oh, body made of plastic. Same as plastic cook. While we examine plastic butler, you murder Lionel Twain. You're a clever little laundryman, Mr. Wang. But not quite clever enough. I'll take that one million dollars. Benson, Mum. Alias Irving Goldman. Irving Goldman? Yes. Irving Goldman was the attorney of the late Lionel Twain. Lionel Twain died five years ago. His body was recently discovered in Goldman's filing cabinet. Am I correct, Mr. Goldman? Yeah, correct, Miss Marbles. But how did you escape the poison gas? Oh, quite simple. I covered my mouth and let Miss Withers here breathe in all the gas. Mm -mm. Sicky pill. Yes, dear, I know. The million dollars, please. I wouldn't if I were you, Goldman. Or is it Goldman? Actually, it's Mr. Marvin Metzner. Marvin Metzner? Very good, Mr. Charleston. But how did you know? The bill in the dead butler's hand, stating that the entire weekend had been catered. Only an accountant would have held on to a thing like that. Dickie, get the money and let's go. Yeah, no, sorry. Goldman was killed last month while skiing. He jumped 200 feet into a low-flying plane. Dickie, I can't wait much longer. You've not lost your touch, Mr. Charleston. But how did you elude the deadly scorpion? Oh, we didn't. He stung Dora. We have 15 minutes to get to the doctor. Could you explain later, Dickie? We'll make it, darling. Never please. fear. The prize money, Mr. Metzner? Belongs to me, monsieur. Marcel, being one of the world's strongest men, stopped your ceiling from crushing us at four feet, five inches. It may be months before we are able to straighten up again. But a million dollars will buy a lot of back braces. Eh? Miss Eileen Twain, daughter of Lionel? What? I prefer to be called Rita. But how did you know? Never underestimate a Frenchman's nostrils, Miss Twain. At dinner tonight, I smelled your Chanel number no. five. It was you who did away with all of them. Metzner, Goldman, and your father. In fact, if you had your way, you would do away with all men. Would you not, Miss Twain? Men who have made you ashamed and made you suffer because you were born with brains, talent, money, everything but that which you most desired. Beauty. It is a statement of fact, Miss Twain. That as a man, you are barely passable. But as a woman, you are a dog. That's your opinion, big boy. And now my money, please. With luck, I can still make dinner at Maxim's. If I were you, I'd just order a tuna fish sandwich, because that dough belongs to me. That's right, I'm alive and kicking. Miss Skeffington here dropped your bomb down to John. It blew up just as he flushed. The seat missed her head by an inch. <coughs> I'm all right, JJ. JJ? That's right, folks. He outsmarted us all. Sitting behind that desk is the real Sam Diamond. My name is Loomis, J.J. Loomis. I'm an actor, I do impressions. I did the caution show six times last year. Diamond hired me for the weekend. 
Miss Skeffington here is actually Vilma Norman. She's a cocktail waitress at the Waterbed Motel in Carmel. Hi. Hello. Hi. Diamond hated all of you. You were all getting the big money, and he had that crummy little office in San Francisco. If he proved that he was number one, he would get all your rich clients. But since I put the, all the pieces together, I figure that money belongs to me. Isn't that right, Mr. Diamond? Wrong. That would have been so obvious a child could have guessed it. No, my dear colleagues, what you all seem to overlook is the most simple and direct solution. That I am indeed Lionel Twain. <laughs> You've all been so clever for so long. You've forgotten to be humble. You've tricked and fooled your readers for years. You've tortured us all with surprise endings that made no sense. You've introduced characters in the last five pages that were never in the book before. You've withheld clues and information that made it impossible for us to guess who did it. But now, the tables are turned. Millions of angry mystery readers are now getting their revenge. When the world learns I've outsmarted you, they'll be selling your $1.95 books for 12 cents. It's checkout time, ladies and gentlemen. I have your bills ready. Oh. Credit cards will be accepted. Everything. The bridge, the maid. But you're sure about the scorpion? Positive. Even the fog. He made that with a dry ice machine. See for yourself. How awfully unromantic. Then if he really was Lionel Twain, you must really be Sam Diamond. That's right, baby. I was in disguise, in disguise, in disguise. You work hard for 50 bucks a day in this racket. I guess that means we won't be seeing each other again, sir. Well, that depends. I'll be around if you need me. All you gotta do is whistle. And you know how to whistle, don't you, baby? Yes, certainly. What do you mean? All right, Come never mind. Me. Forget it. You ruined it. I don't understand, Pop. Was there a murder or wasn't there? Yes, killed good weekend. Drive fleet. Ha, 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 ha. 